Did you know it's Thursday? Cause I just, I learned, that's new information for me. That's news to me. I thought it was Wednesday, even though yesterday was Wednesday. It's been feeling like it's perpetually Tuesday and Wednesday for the entire past couple of weeks. Anyways, if your life is like that, leave a comment down below. But if your life is not like that, my life be like, ooh, ah, ooh. Let's talk about the existential question of the day, which is, is air just boneless water? Is it? Okay, all right, it's water vapors in the air. It's just water without bones, very easy. And I know, I know a lot of you are gonna tell me that water doesn't have any bones, to which I say, you, so you hope. I prefer my water and air boneless. I do, I do prefer boneless water. I will say that, yes, you're right, Reese. You know who's not right though? Intel, they ain't right in the head, boy. There is some interesting details coming out from MSI. They held a live stream yesterday about the overclocking potential of the upcoming Cotton Lake chips. And when I say upcoming, it's in this like weird, like they've been released, but they're not released. So we don't have benchmarks yet. Anyways, MSI provided a breakdown of how they evaluated the chip samples that Intel gave to them directly. And out of all of the chips that Intel gave to MSI of the i5 variety, only 2% were better than Intel specifications. Of the i7s, it was 5%, and of the i9s, it was 27%. So very clearly there, we can see that Intel is binning their chips. The i9s, definitely the highest quality chips, the best for overclocking. If you're buying an i5, you're probably not gonna be able to squeeze a whole ton out of it. However, the interesting bit gets with their other versions. So the level B is what Intel's specifications given to MSI to make motherboards was. For the i5s, 52% hit that mark. For the i7s, 58% hit that mark. But for the i9s, only 35% were as good as Intel said. But they also have a higher number that is better than Intel said, so there is that. The, the key thing comes for the level C, which is the chips that they got that were worse than what Intel said they would be, which is 31% on the i5s, 32% on the i7s, and 27% of the i9s. So the specification that Intel gave to motherboard manufacturers saying, hey, make it so that your motherboard can supply this much voltage for this much frequency and make it so that it doesn't melt. When MSI did that, that they found, oh, hey, a third of them underperform that specification. They either draw more voltage, they can't hit as good of a clock speed, or they're just not as good as Intel said the specification was for them, which, I mean, you can take that for what it is. Do motherboard manufacturers tend to overbuild their CPUs for the stock settings? Yes. Is your comment like chip not gonna be able to hit base frequency? No, that's not the case here. It shouldn't be like the 10900K is not gonna be able to boost to four and a half gigahertz. It's not really what's going on. It's just the fact that Intel themselves set a specification for all of this and then a third of them fell short in MSI's testing. Obviously, this is a sample size that they did not say how many chips that they have. And we don't have a whole lot of clarity of was this engineering samples or these retail samples? When did they get these chips? How effectively were they tested? So a lot remains to be seen, but it's just, it's a curious little bit of info. Just like these leak benchmarks of the i9-10900K, curious little bit of info showing that the i9-10900K overclocked to 5.4 gigahertz is squarely in between a 3800X and a 3900X at stock. So if those chips are at stock, a 10 cores right in the middle from Intel, you think eight cores, 12 cores, 10 cores? I mean, it just makes sense, okay? Good good leak benchmark, that's a, it's just a curious little thing. Also curiously, motherboards for Intel's Z490 platform are on sale as of today. You can head on over to Newegg, we have our Amazon affiliate link down below if you are considering picking one of these up, which highly wouldn't recommend you to do that. Anyways, the one that I think I like the most is the Gigabyte Z 490 Vision G. I like the aesthetics of this. Anyways, they're gonna be released on May 20th, so that's when you'll get your shipments of them. But now on sale, you can check them out. And we talked previously in a couple episodes ago that the Z490 Aqua was a thing, which I just guesstimated would be $1,000. I was wrong. It's $1,100. Yowza. That hurts my jimmies. But what won't hurt my jimmies, at least according to this latest rumor that's coming out about the next socket that Intel's gonna produce for Alder Lake, which is the LGA 1700, to which I hear you saying, but Brett, didn't we just get the LGA 1200? Yes, we did, my fellow viewer. We absolutely just got a new socket, which is only supposed to theoretically last this year, and then LGA 1700 comes out next year. That's the current information that's floating out in cyberspace about how Intel's gonna be working things. However, it appears potentially like this might support multiple generations. More than two, 
more than two because the current setup has been two generations per motherboard. Hopefully, at least according to this notebook check report, the LGA 1700 could support at least three <laughs> Intel breaking the mold. Say what you want, that's new for them. Hey, that's that's a 50% increase. Speaking of 50% increase, wouldn't you like it if your Nintendo Switch was 50% faster? Yeah. Well, there's new rumors, which are old rumors, but newly hyped about the Nintendo Switch getting an upgrade, not through Nvidia. It's actually potentially going to be through this Samsung and AMD Exynos partnership, at least according to things that are floating around again on the interwebs, saying, showing the benchmarks that we had earlier in this week about how the RDNA mobile processor is slapping everything Qualcomm can come out with. RDNA, which is being produced by AMD, is very scalular, scalable. It's got scales. It's a dragon, really. That's what's going on. So it can start at the little baby dragon egg or it could go all the way up to Smaug. That's basically where we're at. And this would be like in the hatchling phase. Like you just got a little adolescent dragon. That's what you could expect in the Nintendo Switch with partnership with Samsung. This is a possibility. Again, not much to substantiate this rumor at this point. A lot of people want an upgraded Switch, a Switch Pro, a Switch where when you dock it, it has an external GPU or the dock itself has extra power. Any of those would be a great idea. I think Nintendo, Maybe, I know they don't care. They don't care about their hardware. They've never cared about their hardware. But AMD cares about their software. And in case you haven't heard of it, AMD has GPU open, which is supposed to be the direct counter to Nvidia's GameWorks. And it's kind of been like implemented here and there. The pop most popular one is Trust Effects, which is for the hair and all of that. That was heavily used in the Tomb Raider games that came out recently. Anyways, apparently next week, AMD has big plans for GPU open, saying that there is gonna be new content coming every day next week. Obviously, this could be in partnership with the fact that they're getting ready for next-gen console launches, making sure that a lot of game developers will choose to use them over NVIDIA stuff. Who knows if that'll happen? And who knows when we're going to get the RX 5600M and 5700M that AMD announced. We've been waiting on Navi 10 and mobile. When will it happen? Who freaking knows? There's a new rumor saying that it should be soon. Also, maybe soon, A520 motherboards from AMD. You got B550 coming out on June 16th. AMD confirmed that themselves, but now there are listings of Asus's five different versions, the A520 motherboard. Hopefully, maybe those will come out soon. Those would go in great partnership with the Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X, which just launched. Benchmarks came out today. Haven't had enough time to go through them for hot news, but there's plenty of videos to watch on that. And there's plenty of videos to watch about graphics cards out on the internet. But Tom's Hardware just came out with a really cool article which you can check out. I highly recommend that you go down to the description and click on it, but they show the average power usage of graphics cards. Uh, and they tested over 40 of them. And dang, some interesting stuff. I think the highlight for me is the fact that the Vega 64 is the most horrific offender, which just makes sense. Makes sense. It makes so much sense. So check that out down below, which you could do if you had a newspaper on your lap. You could check the newspaper down below because you look down and there's the newspaper. Well, YouTube apparently might be working with newspapers to sell subscriptions to them through the YouTube platform. There's not a whole lot of detail going on there, but there are some reports coming out that YouTube is potentially going to be working with the news industry to make it so that they don't die. That's basically what it is. No word on revenue sharing or anything like that, but this could be similar to, I guess, like how Apple News is, where they have a revenue split for like how that goes. So speaking of revenue split though, PewDiePie getting a lot of revenue from YouTube because he just signed an exclusivity deal with YouTube to exclusively stream on their platform. Wasn't he with some weird platform I'd never heard of? So yes, he was with a blockchain-based streaming service known as DLive, which I never got into just because like anything crypto is just usually flash and nothing else. Any So I, this is big moves. Obviously, Twitch, Mixer, Facebook Gaming, and YouTube signing people to exclusivity deals recently. It's been quite the thing. Dr. Disrespect recently, I think last week or earlier this week, got an exclusivity deal signed with Twitch. So big stuff happening in the streaming world. PewDiePie, not going anywhere else. Also big moves going on in the world in PC cases. Okay, this is this is the big, most thing I'm hyped for this year. Zygmatech just announced their OMG case, which looks like a super, super boring mid-tower chassis, but it has the letters OMG and an exclamation point in mesh on the front. Why? Why the hell? Right? I don't get it. I don't get it. I also don't get how cybersecurity works because I'm just not a physics. But some physics at a university 
were able to come out with a new cyber attack. We previously reported on how they could cyber attack through your fans' vibrations. Well, same researchers came out and said, hey, hey, we can hear your power supply now too. We can hack your power supply. It still needs to use the phone like the previous Air One. How this is gonna work, who knows? Is it just a proof of concept? Absolutely. But you know what's not a proof of concept anymore? Microsoft's new Surface devices. They came out with a whole bunch of them yesterday. Surface Go 2, Surface Book 3, Surface Headphones 2, which come in matte black, and the Surface Dock 2. In case you're interested in any of those, those are gonna be happening. But I can tell what you're not interested in, which is reality TV. It, I mean, if you're watching this, I mean, maybe you'll watch it if it's on TV, but you're not gonna actively seek it out. Well, you're gonna have no choice but to do that over on Twitch because they are apparently working on live and interactive reality TV shows to put those on Twitch's platform. I don't like it. They're reportedly gonna have a budget between 50 and $250,000 per week, which is excessive and too much for Twitch. Twitch is not professional TV. And if we turn it into professional TV, then people are gonna riot just like they did on YouTube when it was only Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, Stephen Colbert, and whoever on the trending page and nobody else. It's basically what's gonna happen. You, you can go on Twitch to watch live streams. You can also go to Spotify to now watch podcasts. Wow. Apparently, they're beta testing videos accompanying podcasts. They're starting with Zane and Heath Unfiltered. They're part of the Vlog Squad, David Dobrik's little thing that's going on right now. Half of the subscribers to that podcast on Spotify will get a video feed if they so choose. The other half will not. They're only testing it in limited quantities right now with this one podcast, but they could potentially be bringing out video podcasts in conjunction with that. And in case you're looking for podcasts to listen to, I could highly recommend The Darkest Timeline right now. That's been something I've been enjoying. Ken Jeong, Joel McHale, they're just talking about community and and other stuff, it's just hilarious. They just insult each other the entire time. It's a wild ride. But if you want two friends, well, then you can listen to Fake Doctors, Real Friends by Zach Braff and Donald Faison doing a Scrubs rewatch. And it's so good, so good. They keep me company every morning. But unfortunately, Uber is not gonna be keeping the company of 3,700 employees. They're gonna be laying off 14% of its workforce, primarily in their customer support and recruiting teams because they don't need to support any customers because they have fewer of them and they don't need to recruit drivers because nobody's taking rides. It's understandable that this is happening. However, it kind of sucks. That's a lot of people losing their jobs. Tone change, Xbox Series X has a new optimized for badge. This is what it looks like. Moving on. Did you know that for eight years, there was a Prince of Persia game on YouTube that nobody knew about? Did you know this? There was gameplay footage of Prince of Persia Redemption. This game never came out. It's been on YouTube since 2012. And people just recently, as of yesterday, started finding it. It went from like, uh, uh, tens of views to now it has close to 300,000 views as of the time of filming. So yesterday we talked about how Prince of Persia 6 just got its domain name registered to Ubisoft. I mean, maybe this is why we haven't seen a Prince of Persia game recently because you know they did release one on YouTube and nobody cared. And I don't care to continue this episode, I'm done. Let's talk about the existential question of the day. Is this just boneless water? Is it? It is to me. And you, to me, are something special. And I'm glad that I have you in my life. Why don't you come watch us? live on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple, where I could interact with you live. You could type your chat message and I can choose to read it, I could choose to shout it, or I could choose to twerk to it. You'd never know, it's a possibility when we do our live streams. So come check us out. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.